guys, welcome back to Statistical Methods and Analysis. We're on Chapter 5 here. We're going to work with correlation and correlation coefficients. Um, last chapter, I kept mentioning a lot about Excel and how to make histograms. I really got, hope you guys bought the Excel book that goes along with it. It walks you through how to do that step by step. So if you do get confused, it's going to help you do all these calculations that we learned in this class in Excel in that little manual that you should have purchased with the book. Um, we're going to start here on correlation coefficients, though. Um, things that you're going to learn in this chapter, what is correlation and how they work. Um, all about correlations, how to compute them, how to interpret them, other types of correlations that exist. We're not going to really touch on this one a whole lot, but the top ones we're going to really talk about here. All right. What correlations are about? It examines the relationship between two variables. Uh, most of the time we're dealing with two variables. Um, it's examining the relationship relationship with um, your range that you're going to get out is between negative one and positive one um, bivariate just means two variables and Pearson correlation one well, we're going to use the most is um, just founded Carl Pearson determined this new kind of correlation it's uh, what Excel uses so you just need to get comfortable with that um, types of correlation positive it, direction when variables change in the same direction all right, so positive correlation variables are changing in the same direction. So homework scores go up, well, quiz scores go up. Homeworks, or homework scores go up, EOC scores go up, stuff like that. Negative correlation, indirect, goes the opposite way. Um, your amount of studying went up, but your test score went down. Your amount of studying went down, but your test score went up. Things that don't necessarily go in the same direction, but there is a correlation between I would strongly recommend using direct correlation and indirect. Positive and negative might screw you up um, a little bit, but direction correlation, two things going in the same direction. Indirect, two things going in opposite directions. All right, you'll see R, X, Y, it's the correlation between X and Y, correlation between your two variables you're using. All right, so relationship between variables. Here's a data set. If you look at the data set, there's kind of a pattern going on. We're kind of going up in this general direction. There's a couple points that are outside that general direction, but we got a correlation going on. That's what we're going to try to determine is how strong of a correlation X is to Y. All right, things to remember about correlation, the range is between negative 1 and 1. I said that once before, but I'm going to reiterate it. If you get something besides that out, you didn't do the right test. Okay, correlation will always be between negative 1 and 1. The absolute value indicates how strong it is. Uh, if you don't remember what absolute value is, you're going to take and you're going to put a number into an absolute value, say it's negative 0.5. The absolute value makes that positive, so you can get positive 0.5 as your absolute value. Put a positive into an absolute value, you can get a positive out. So point, absolute value 0.5 is also 0.5. So it just makes everything positive. Um, that's going to show you your strength. It reflects situations where there are at least two data points. That's key. You have to have at least two data points for a correlation. Um, and then back here to the indirect and direct instead of positive or negative. All right, it's a little tough to see on the video, but here is your Pearson um, correlation calculation. If you would like to calculate it by hand, you just plug it into that formula. You can see it on the PowerPoint. Um, what do all the symbols mean? They mean a lot of stuff, a lot of them, x, y, summation the number of things in there, um, all the things they mean. Tough to keep it straight. It's a big, big formula. Excel does it all for you. Type your data sets in, enter your two columns into the calculation, and it pops out an answer for you. Um, steps in computation, list two variables. Okay, Compute the sum of x and y. Square the values of x and y. Find the sum of the product of x and y. Now plug these variables into the formula. It says, see, it's easy. It's, I would love to tell you it's easy, but there's a lot of things you can mess up. You need to learn how to use Excel here and how to use the Pearson correlation. I will have an Excel video up here later on, so feel free to watch that. All right, visual picture. Back to chapter four, we talked about visual pictures. Here's another type of visual picture. For correlations, we have what's called scatter plots. You got an x value, you got y values, and you plot the points. Uh, great ways to represent these pictures. Um, just by looking at picture, you should be able to tell if it's 
correlation has a strong, a weak, a moderate correlation. This one, I would say, it probably has a pretty moderate indirect correlation. Everything's pretty close to this line, what we call best fit. We'll talk about that later on in this um, class. But right now, you know, you just look at it. It explains in a picture of what you calculated on your Pearson correlations. All right, strong positive relations. Right here is a perfect correlation. Everything's on the exact same line. It has a correlation of one. Right here, everything's on the same line roughly. There's a couple points above, a couple points below. That's a strong correlation. It's probably about a 0 0.7, 0 0.75 in correlation when you get that out. Um, anything from 0.75 to 1 is a strong correlation. Just one of the rules of thumb that you want to use. Strong negative correlation. Notice the difference. Now our data is going down in a negative direction, but it's still all grouped around one general line right there. So it's a, it's a strong correlation, but it's in the negative direction. Here's our correlation, correlation matrix. Notice here it's income, education, attitude, vote, same thing on the top. When you look at this, you will always get a one out when income and income line up. It's the same data set. Education, education, attitude, attitude, vote, vote. You'll get a one out because it's the same data set running against itself. It is going to have a perfect correlation since it's the same points. If you look here at how you read this is education and income, how do they correlate? It's a 0.574. So they correlate fairly moderately. The more education you have, it means it's positive, so your income's going up as your education goes up, and it's pretty good correlation, it's over 0.5, so it's saying it's pretty reliable. Um, if you look here, income and attitude, it's negative, and look how weak it is, 0.08. That's basically saying there's no correlation here, it's spread out all over the place. Then if you look at your income and your vote, it's negative, it's 0.29. Still not a very strong correlation, but it's not as weak as attitude and income. Um, all the negatives mean it's negatively correlated. The positive means it's positively correlated. So if you look at that, the only thing on this chart that's positively correlated is income and education. So I know we're all educators. It's something you can show your students. Um, this, is, this is from a true data set. So if you have the need to explain to your students that education is important, go ahead and pull this up. All right. Interpreting the correlation coefficients, like I said before, straight line, that means everything's on the line. Everything's perfectly correlated. It's saying I could pick the next point to be somewhere on this line. It's a linear equation, if you um, remember that back there. It has the exact same slope the whole way through. Here, um, how variables share variance. Um, you got your thin here, but notice, I'm going to draw a line right here. Notice our line of best fit. Not everything's on this line, but it's fairly close. And it's all, they're all going in the same direction. Your variance is how far away from the line these things are. Um, you don't have to figure that out. That's what Excel does for you when it gives you a correlation coefficient. What it's saying is these things are all a certain distance away from this line of best fit. And since they are a certain ways away, this is how strong of a correlation they have. All right, so we're done with chapter five of your glossary. The Pearson correlation, direct correlation, indirect correlation, scatter plot, those are things you definitely need to know. Uh, if you have any questions, don't, you know, don't hesitate asking. Uh, email me. If you email me at my NNU or my Valley View account, I'll get it. I'll get it faster on my Valley View account because I have that up all day. Um, also, Tuesday, Thursday nights, um, I'm going to have an Adobe Connect classroom up. I'm sorry it's not up right now. Something happened when I transferred the class over, but I will have it up for you here.